Well, today we're taking a look at the Rake P135 pocket knife. And stay tuned because in this video we're going to answer a few of your questions from the mailbag. Well, hey folks, welcome to the channel. Welcome to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. You know, I always am on the lookout for high value, high performing blades. And I've seen that from Rake with some of their knives. Now Rake is owned by Phoenix or Phoenix is owned by them, something like that, flashlights. So it's cool to see a partnership with a really good flashlight company and now a good pocket knife company who's starting to make fixed blades as well. Now these are Chinese made, but man, these are fantastic value to performing blades. And you can just see the awesome elegance of this design and what they've decided to go with. All the materials are fantastic. The fit and finish is perfect. And you know, we talked about this concept with another company, Kaiser, recently, and another Chinese company that does amazing performance and amazing fit and finish. But you know, you can get knives for $175. This one comes in at $50. We're going to have links in the description below over to Amazon and Blade HQ. We really appreciate it when you guys use those hyperlinks. If this blade or any other pocket knives that we talk about today or other gear connects with you, when you guys use those hyperlinks, helps me get out there, make content just like this. So thank you for your support. And for $50, I think you're getting a really sick blade. GT Jr. is gonna join us here for just a second as we continue to talk. I love hanging out with my little buddy and being able to, to make content for you guys at the same time. Now, one of the first things I wanna hit with you, which is a, a newer aspect to the Rake line, and they're starting to do it with more of their products, not only on this knife, is their uh, Beta Plus lock, I believe is what they call it. Now, this is a frame lock done really well. Just love the contours on the handle. And the locking mechanism is awesome. You're gonna get like 50 to 60% of the blade locked in, super solid, no wobble, nothing like that. Really good back pin right there that the a blade is gonna slam into. So, I mean, it's a solid lock. But then to add to that is this beta lock. So what you do is if you push it forward, now I cannot disengage the frame lock. It'll wobble side to side, not wobble, but you know what I mean. There's travel side to side slightly, but I cannot disengage the lock. And then when I snap it back down, I can easily open and close the blade. So it's just like this little cool extra backup, you know, safety feature. Uh, if you feel like you're gonna be really bearing down on the knife and doing some harder tasks and you don't wanna have your hand accidentally disengage the frame lock or something like that, I think it's a really cool added bonus. I'm not normally gonna use it in my day-to-day -day tasks, you know, eat, opening up an Amazon package that arrived at my house, you know, doing some food prep, uh, maybe, you know, cutting through some rubber, something like that, cardboard, you know, which is the majority of what we're gonna be doing with these knives. I don't think it's needed. It's a cool added bonus for those of you who want to deploy it and use something that has this extra locking feature. It's cool they're doing it and it's very functional and does its job. Next up is the deployment. We've got a really, really nice thumb ramp right there in the flipper. No jimping on it or anything like that, but very easy to engage, you whip that sucker open. Ball bearing pivot. For $50, you're getting ball bearings that are ultra smooth. I just love it. It's really, really nice. And they do a great job with that. And it makes me really, if it's under $50, I'm okay with bronze bushings at this point. But you know, when I'm looking at some Benchmades, and I love Benchmade, don't get me wrong, uh, and they're giving us, you know, they're, they're wanting $150, $180 for a knife and it's on bronze bushings. I'm like, come on, a lot of companies and a lot of Chinese companies in particular are putting really good ball bearing bushings on their pivots and it's significantly better in the smoothness of deployment. So I wanna see more companies in general do that. And for $50, you're getting a really awesome finger flipper and ball bearing pivot. You got a nice stop bar back there. So again, I mean, it, it, it all, the, de the deployment, the lockup and the centering, perfect, dead center. Zero complaints or issues there as well. Just done right. Done right for $50, you're getting a screaming, screaming knife in that capacity. All right, now he wants to get down, that's perfect. So you can just see there, just really well done. This is a G10 spacer back here, flow through construction. Really good, no hot spots, no sharpness. We do have just a little bit of jimping right here on the back and then a really nice cut in. So I'm definitely locked in, you know, with the jimping and the finger flipper. So I'm not gonna accidentally slide up and hurt myself, but I have a lot of control on the knife. Now let's be honest with you guys, the elegance of the handle really connects with me. 
Now it's a 420 stainless steel handle. And at that size, you can guess it, it's a heavy knife. It's 5.9 ounces. So it's definitely on the beefier end. Now they seem to balance it really well. It doesn't feel like a giant brick in my pocket. I've been carrying it in my, you know, um, gym shorts. And that's always a really good telltale sign is this thing just like swinging around. It's not swinging around. It's definitely heavy though. I'm not gonna lie to you. You'd be like, oh yeah, it's like a two ounce knife. No, I mean, it's a, it's a big heavy folder. Some of you really like that. Some of you are gonna go, oh, six ounces, blah, no thanks. So I totally get that. But they seem to balance it pretty well. It is one of my heavier knives, but it's one that I could easily carry and I'm not feeling like it is this big brick swinging around in my pocket. One thing that shows that they are trying though, and just again, the attention to detail, is when you look in here on this body piece, they have milled out the the, the steel frame right there. Uh, so inside there is milling to cut down on the weight to at least get it to the weight that we're talking about. Otherwise, this probably would have been closer to like seven ounces. So that's pretty impressive that they are still willing to mill out and are conscious of weight. If they weren't conscious about weight, this thing would be like seven, seven and a half ounces. Now we do have a really good loop over pocket clip. The screws are not recessed. That would be nice to see, uh, but it still does a great job. Great tension there. It's not gonna thrash your pocket again. Great for EDC. Righty only, nothing for lefties. Would have liked to see something there for lefties in the future. There's no reason why they couldn't have something there. It would just keep, you know, the aesthetics wouldn't be quite as nice if they had a little um, cut out there, but uh, other than that, the functionality, there's no reason that I couldn't. Nice giant lanyard hole, you can easily get 550 paracord through if you wish. So one of our questions comes from Shrek185, and he asks, uh, I am curious, what is the best bag for females? My wife wants to start coming on longer hikes with me, and I need to start getting her gear as well. Great question, I hope one day, once our like baby situation is kind of resolved and our children are old enough to get on the trail regularly with us, my wife will start testing some more you know, packs with me long term. But um, without going into a t ton of detail, these are the, the companies that I would look at. Um, Mountain Smith and Osprey and Kelty. Those three companies all make women specific gear and I would definitely look into them. And by women specific, it just usually means that the, the hip belts are usually cut a little bit different. The st sternum straps are changed a little different and um, just for a more comfortable ride for the female body. But those three companies really have focused on making sure to give women uh, as good a ride as possible. They all three have great aspects to them. So I would just begin to look into those three companies, kind of narrow your search to those, maybe go to a sporting goods store so you can try some on, maybe purchase through Amazon, links below. Um, and you know, Amazon has a great return policy. So if one doesn't fit right or whatever, you can return it, whatever, however. But those are the three companies that I would at least begin to look at because they do make women specific gear. Next up, Quinn Warman asks, uh, if you were to come to New Zealand for a hike, where would you go and why? Thanks, uh, Quinn from New Zealand. Great question. I really want to go to New Zealand. My wife and I, you know, she's an uh, amateur photographer, me doing the YouTube channel. I think New Zealand has so many different aspects that are just amazing and stunning. So it's definitely on our bucket list to go to at some point. Uh, I have not researched it enough. I have no idea where I would go hiking, but I'm really excited one day to hopefully go hiking. And if the channel is existing, when I go there, I will definitely take you guys along on the adventure. But that's a great question, Quinn. Now to the sick part of this knife, this blade. The shape is epic, love it. We got this high top down here into the secondary swedge. So it has this reverse sheep's foot, you know, design with this little swedge right here. Really like that a lot. Kind of looks like a pterodactyl or something like that. Really dig it, but it's really nice and thick. Still coming to a good precision there on the tip. Really liking that a lot. Great relief edge, stupid sharp out of the box. Really, really digging that blade shape. Was extremely functional. Back at the spine, it's gonna be 0 0.14, which is a little on the thick end, but they taper it down and with the grind angle, I did not notice any thickness issues, you know, binding up and, you know, prohibiting some of the slicing capability of the knife. It looks to me like a very high saber grind. Um, if it is a hollow grind, I was just looking at it and trying to read up on it. It didn't really give me a lot of detail um, in that regard. If it is a hollow grind, it's the shallowest hollow grind ever. I believe it's a saber grind from what I am looking at. And then it's also made out of a great material. And this again is a reason why I'm not going to be paying $50 anymore really for 
I, I'm gonna have a big problem with it, I guess. For like Aussie and 8CR, um, you know, 13 MOV steel blades, 8CR14 or whatever blades, is because for 50 bucks, I'm getting all this fit and finish, all this elegance, all this, you know, performance, and then I'm getting Sandvik 14C 28 end steel with a Rockwell of 58 to 60 that has been cryogenically treated. So, I mean, this is like the t best, um, uh, what is it, 14C 28 end Sandvik steel you can get. I mean, this isn't like some joker, like, yeah, we just kind of like bought it just to say the name on it and we didn't really do anything with it. I mean, they rock welded it high, they heat treated it well, and so this is gonna hold a really, really nice edge, far surpassing your OS 8s, far surpassing your 8CRs. And, you know, like those type of, you know, 420 high carbon, you know, whatever. So when I see knives that are $45, $50 and they want OS 8, or, or they have OS 8 or, you know, Chinese 8CR, I have a big problem paying that much. I mean, I'll pay, you know, $20, $30 for that, but there's still companies uh, that are producing that, and, and that's a big ding for me when I can get these type of knives with this great steel from Rake and other companies like Rake, you know, uh, Real Steel, there are a couple of the, the Kaisers with VG10 at about the same price point. I mean, they're they're killing it. So this is a call out to US companies like C like CRKT, Ontario Knife Company, K-Bar. Uh, some of these knives that I've seen recently coming out that I'm like, these, this is junk steel and you're wanting me to play, pay close to $50 or $50 for it in comparison to what I'm getting on this knife and many others, it's, it's a no-brainer for me. So for size perspective, just wanna run in here real quick, the P801, previously reviewed. Same steel, Samvik 14C28N, frame lock, same pocket clips, uh, you know, f steel body, steel body. It will not have the beta lock plus right here, this little secondary lock, and uh, isn't just quite as large. But other than that, you're getting basically the very similar knife, just a little lighter, a little more, more compact, full flat grind versus a saber grind. Uh, and it's gonna be, you know, $20 less. It's gonna be $30, so we'll have links in the description below for this guy if you're wanting something a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller, and um, just similar, but wanting to save a little bit on the pennies, still getting a great EDC knife, the P801. So finally, the blade length itself is from handle to tip is 3.62 inches, so just a hair over three and a half inches, like literally like a micron over. Great, I mean, it's a large, big, heavy, sleek, elegant, space combat blade. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's a space combat EDC blade. That's something that maybe some uh, Starship Trooper in the future or something would wanna carry. But uh, yeah, guys, I mean, this thing is delicious and nutritious for my EDC addiction and my pocket knife addiction. Uh, Rake, Rookie, however you wanna pronounce it, uh, I think really has knocked it out of the park. They're doing it with several of their other designs as well that we've already tested out and taken a look at. I would highly recommend looking them up. Again, links below, not only to this knife, but many of their other knives that'll have on Amazon and Blade HQ. Uh, Rake did send this over to me to give you guys this honest feedback. I'm always honest with you guys. You know that uh, so that I can give you guys the pointers of things I like about it, things I don't. And really the only hang up, these are the two hang ups I have, is uh, the weight. Would have liked to have it about an ounce lighter, you know, around five ounces would have been great. Um, I don't really know how they could do that except just milling it out even more or, you know, coming up with something different, but I don't really know what. And no left-handed pocket clip. Those are the only two beefs that I have with this design. Other than that, it is freaking amazing. Uh, and if you are into heavier, bigger blades, I think you're gonna totally love it and you're gonna be getting a huge value for the $50-ish you know, -ish price point. So thank you guys for coming over here today, checking out the channel. Please subscribe, comment, like, share this video. Love to hear your guys' thoughts, questions that you may have about this design or any others. Love to answer in the comments below. Don't forget to hit, if you want a particular question answered in an upcoming video, hashtag mailbag, put that comment below as well, and I'll take a look at it and you may get on to the channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you're not a current subscriber, I invite you to become part of the GT family. Throwing up videos like this every single week, two to four videos. You current subscribers are awesome. Thank you for your support. Always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared. We'll see you out there.